All right, welcome to almost the last one for our perimeter area and volume sheets. This one here is volume number three. Tripped a few people up on this one. I'm going to show you the two basic ways we can calculate this. And I'll do the same thing for the third option there as well. Um, first up, we're just going to basically solve this uh, as logically as we see it. This shape, again, does not change over its length. So obviously, this 14 foot six and a half is that length, that third dimension which means this here is our cross-sectional area, okay? Now, again, with all these problems, guys, there are many different ways you could break this thing up, right? Before I get started in that, I'm gonna put in some dimensions for what this stuff is, right? So this would be 12.125. I don't know what six and a half is, 6.5 divided by 12. This would be 14. Point five four one six six um, five point seven five divided by twelve. This would be ten point four seven nine one six six, and then this ten inches would be point eight three repeating. Okay, so that's all my basic numbers done here. Now you can solve this out in multiple different ways. I'm gonna do one way, which is my least favorite first, okay? Um, my least favorite way first would be to break this shape up into just a whole bunch of little tiny rectangles. Let's do that. Let's say we have this one here and this one here. And I'm gonna do the same cut down here. So these are all the same. I'll call this area one, and I'll also call this area one. I'll call this area two and this area two. So remember, area one will be times two, okay? I'm just, just putting that out there just so we have a mental note so we don't forget. Well, area one, looking at this bottom shape right here, the length is 12.125. And then the width here is just that little width, which is our 10 inches, which is 0 0.83 repeating. Now I'm gonna make sure to times this by two because I have two sections, the bottom and the top. So I have 12.125 times 0 0.8, oops, it's not 0 0.8, 0 0.8333 times two, which gives me 20.2083 repeating, okay? And that is square feet. So now for area two, I'm also gonna multiply it by two because it's two shapes, but there's a little catch here. I'm gonna change my color to green here for this little, this little section. I want to just figure out the length of this shape. Well, this one is shrinking up by 10 inches and I'm also shrinking it up by 10 inches here, right? So if I just move this up here real quick, just to get what this dimension is in here right now, right? That inside dimension, it would be 10.479166 minus 0 0.83 minus 0 0.83, okay? I'm taking off 10 inches and 10 inches. So if I go 10.4791666 minus 0.83 minus 0.83, I could have also done minus 1.6666. I end up with 8.8125, okay? And that is the length here, 8.1, sorry, 8.8125. So now for my area number two, and I'll just keep going in green here just for this, the length would be 8.8125 times the width, which is still that 10 inches, 0 0.833, okay? And then I would times this by two because there's two of those shapes. So I have 8.8125 times 0.83333 times two. And this gives me 14.68, 75 square feet. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my red here. So my area total in this case would just be the sum of those two values, right? And I'll just round these just for writing purposes. 
20.21 plus 14.69. And just, just rounding for visual, I'm still going to use the decimals there. So plus 20.2083, which gives me a total area of 34.89583. Okay. So now for volume, I just take that cross-sectional area of 34.895833, and I multiply it by that third dimension, which is that 14.54166, okay? And remember, this is square feet, and this is just feet. By multiplying it by that third dimension, it's turning it into volume. So I times by... 14.5416666, which gives me an answer of a volume here of 507.44, okay? 507.44. And if I do a quick divide by 27, that leaves me with 18.79 cubic yards. All right, that's one way to do it. Now, another way to do it, and that way wasn't so bad in a shape like this, um, granted, but, and this next way is probably equally time consuming. But what I'm gonna do here, oops, didn't wanna erase that. I wanted to erase this stuff. Oops, don't really wanna erase that either. Okay, I'll erase these arrows here just so we don't get confused. So I'll keep that inner dimension there, which is 8.8125, because we're going to need it. And then also in blue, I'm going to quickly just sidetrack for a second and solve for this inner dimension as well, which would just be my 12.125 minus my thickness here, which is 0 0.83 repeating. All right, so I'm minusing that thickness from each side. So the 10 inches from here and the 10 inches from here, right? Subtracting those. Because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the area of the outside rectangle, then subtract the area of the inside rectangle to leave me with that kind of wall, and then times it by my third dimension. So minus my outer wall thickness, this one here leaves me with 10.4583 repeated. Okay, um, so I'm going to find the area of the outside box and then subtract the area of the inside box which will leave me with the area of this section here, right? Which is what I want. So first thing, here's I'm gonna leave the answers in the answer box just to see if we can duplicate that answer many times over, which I'm confident we will be able to do. So first thing here, I'm gonna find the area of the big one, which is easy, right? And I'm talking about the big square. So this dimension times this dimension, right? To get the area of this big box here which would simply be 10.479166 times 12.125. So 10.479166 times 12.125, which equals 127.0598958, okay? and that is square feet. Then I'm gonna find the area of the smaller one, which is why I went through the legwork of solving for this inside dimension for each of these. So this 8.8125 was the 10 feet, five and three quarters minus our wall thickness on each side. So we took it off the top section there and the bottom section here, which left us with this 8.8125. Then we did the same thing for the 10 uh, minusing 20 inches from 12.125, okay? So I have those numbers now. So I'm just going to switch over to my green here just for visual purposes, because now I'm going to find the area of this inside shape, right? An inside rectangle, which would just be 8.8125 times 10.45833. So I can multiply that together, 8.8125. 8.125 times 10.4583. And this equals 
point one six four zero six two four seven and again that's square feet so in this case here oops let's do this in blue the area total will be area one minus area two because i want to remove this center section here right i want to get rid of that i only want to be left with the with the outer shape this outer shape here right so i minus the two out which would be 127.06 again just for visual and me typing rounding purposes minus 92.16 okay so i do 127.05989 Five eight minus alpha answer equals, and I get thirty four point eight nine five eight three, which should sound familiar, because now for volume we take that cross sectional area, thirty four point eight nine five eight three, which is our cross sectional area square feet, and we times this third dimension which is 14.54166. So when I times by 14.541666, I end up with, eh, can I get rid of the shadow? And there it is, 5.0744. It's the exact same answer. And then I divide by 27, which gives me my 18.79 which is the exact same answer. So another way you can go about doing that question. Okay, now I'm gonna give you one more third option as well. I keep erasing that one for some reason. One more third option, which is the quickest. Okay, I think it's the quickest, but uh, We'll see. So this is 0 0.83333. Now, what we're going to use this time is we're actually going to use center line perimeter. Okay. So first up, I'm going to solve for the perimeter. Okay. So I have 10.479166 times 2 plus 12.125 times 2. So I have a perimeter here of 45.20833 repeating. So my center line perimeter is going to equal my perimeter 20833 minus eight times half my thickness. My thickness is 10 inches, so I want five inches. So five divided by 12 is 4166. Okay. So my center line perimeter for this shape is 45.208333 minus eight times my half thickness, which is, uh, oops, 0.416666. I hit equals, which gives me a center line perimeter of 41.875. Okay, so now this becomes volume. Very easy. The length is my center line perimeter, 41.875. The width is my wall thickness times my 0 0.83. And then my length or my last depth, height, whatever, is my 14.54166. So I take these numbers times 0 0.8333 times 14.54. 1666, I hit equals, guess what? I end up with 507.44 cubic feet. Once I divide that by 27, I end up with 18.79. And that is by far the quickest method because you can see the amount of lines I use to solve for that. And again, it's it's no different. It's center line perimeter, but you're still doing the same sort of thing as all the other options. You're figuring out the area of this, this section here. If you can find the area of that, right? You find the area of that, then you just times by that third dimension, which is this here. Because the first part of this equation, that part, 
is the area of that front shape, which then I just multiply by that third dimension. So every method we've done, all three methods to solve this question have been done with the same idea in mind by solving for that area first and then timesing by that third dimension. And that's three different ways that you could solve this and every single one gets you the exact same answer as it should. Math is math, it's, it's right. So hopefully that helps you see this stuff a little clearer, also gives you a little bit better understanding of centerline perimeter too, uh, because that's a classic case of using centerline perimeter, uh, just solving the shape, right? We did the same process in this uh, where we solved for um, the area of the slab, right? We took the centerline perimeter of the wall times by the wall thickness and subtracted that from the area of the house, which left us with the area of the slab inside. Right, so a similar procedure in that. Okay, that pretty much does that.